Hello, today is December the 3rd, 2014. My name is Yagini Rasa. I am yoga instructor of the International Open Yoga University. And this is lesson number four of our Open Yoga Lessons online, where I welcome everybody to join me. And all our information is available on the website yogaopenyoga.com. And I really suggest you to take a look on the previous lessons as we will go on and build our yoga knowledge based on the materials we have reviewed so far. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us on yogaopenyoga.com uh, but at gmail.com. And we will try to answer your questions and uh, taking into account your suggestions uh, as expressed by you. So, uh, we are going further, step by step. And today's topic is uh, the second, the first and the second yoga principle, Dharma. And we already managed to discuss this topic, started discussing this topic last time. And I have received a few questions that I will try also to review during this class. Uh, and this lesson will be more fulfilled with the practical examples rather than the theoretical ones. But it's always good to, to ground your uh, yoga practice on your theoretical knowledge as this means that your yoga practice will go much faster than before. And I really uh, suggest that to everybody and I hope that you're enjoying a wonderful time. And we will also discuss uh, the positive uh, effects of yoga uh, as we go on. And also some uh, problematic points of, of, of this topic. So to remind you uh, that uh, if you have any doubts about uh, yoga or whatever is said to be yoga, you have to try to compare it or um, see how well it agrees with the first principle of yoga, the principle of kindness, the principle of ahimsa, of no harm principle. And as you remember, the first principle of yoga sounds you should avoid harming any living being. Unless it's possible, you should have to follow your duty. It's the main suggestion yoga gives. And if uh, anything that you are given uh, is opposite to this one, you should be very careful uh, whether it's true or not. Then the second principle of yoga signs that you should define your goals and not waste your time, resources, energy on the things that are not leading to your goal. And this is the principle of common sense, the principle of logic and the principle of brahmachari of yoga. And we apply these two principles in our everyday life and we really try to stick to them as much as possible. Because uh, as, uh, as we discussed, uh, the first principle is uh, beyond the scope of our logic. It's supreme logic and it's still logical, but we will be able to understand it and explain it, justify it only when we reach the supreme logic. As long as we live in the plane of karma, uh, this is our everyday life, we have to follow the principle of logic, the second yoga principle. And it, it also means that the first principle is prior one, and the second one is the secondary principle. And we try to harming the least, uh, causing the least harm possible in uh, our uh, life. And at the same time, we try to be maximum effective uh, as much as it's possible. Thereby, <clears throat> these two principles at the same time uh, can, can create you a more narrow or wider road 
uh, where you can choose. And this de depends on your previous actions. And this is the law of karma, the, the term you have probably heard quite a lot. But it's nothing more than the law of causes and consequences that, uh, that we have done before is affecting us now. And uh, the, the, the wider is the road, the better is your karma. The more narrow it, the, the worse is your karma. But uh, there is always dharma, the life path. Uh, where you can enjoy the maximum of your positive things and uh, suffer the mo uh, the least of your negative ones are is always there. So you should not be afraid of that. Of course, uh, if there has been some harm to some living beings, then this will return. But there is also the fact uh, that we call all duty or dharma. And... Uh, if it requires causing some suffering, then uh, then there is no possibility to avoid it, or the harm will be bigger, because going the dharma way, we are causing the least of the suffering possible, and that's what we try to do, because the goal of the yoga uh, is self-awareness. Uh, you are when you have explored yourself and have explored the universe. And thereby you have decreased the, the amounts of suffering to none. And thereby you are ready to, to fulfill your duties and, and have left the plane of karma at all. And everybody's happy and satisfied. And this is a, a very exciting process. And yoga is helping you to, to make this process faster and more exciting. Uh, but as I said that uh, in the first principle of yoga, it's ab above the logic level and we really can't uh, give the specific uh, clear uh, justification why should we uh, be uh, kind. Uh, as, as there are so many people that find that it absolutely non practical, illogical to be kind as they suffer some 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 negativity from outside. But uh, we discussed that whatever we have caused is returning to us. And if something bad is happening, then somewhere in the past we have been the reason of this harm that is repeat, uh, returning to us. What we can do, uh, we can try to explore this topic. Uh, as well as with the goals of the second principle and yoga, we can try to apply them in our life. And let's say uh, months or two, or preferably a year. Uh, you don't have to believe in these two principles, especially in the first one, uh, because it's in, in law. It, you would say it's not logical. Yeah. And then... You try to apply it in your life. Okay, I don't believe it, but I will try to follow this principle and see where it takes me. It shouldn't be nothing bad. It, it's, it could be good. Uh, and thereby, you explore. You explore this time and uh, then you analyze. Each time you have applied it and uh, you have uh, received some experience, some results, you analyze it if it's better or if it's worse. And uh, you decide for yourself, is it uh, good or not? It's just repeating and repeating, repeating, analyzing, uh, writing down uh, your uh, special moments, uh, your victories, your, the, this is the inner feeling. Nobody uh, outside will ever tell you how happy you are. This is only your inner feeling, and if you feel good after doing something nice and kind or following your duty, and the result, uh, the result, uh, is it good? Uh, or it, you would say, you would hope for something more. Of course, you have to remember that there is karma, and. Uh, 
whatever we deserve comes back and sometimes we think that we need to do one thing while we should do something different and the duties first and only then the fun part uh, and here is this uh, a very uh, tricky thing like our emotions uh, yoga is very powerful and yoga gives power when you practice uh, you apply first and the second principle you practice yoga you become stronger this again is the like was the dharma and uh, first and the second principle is again closed circle and you just observe uh, how these emotions impact uh, your actions uh, because there are some things that are working from the supreme level and that we have this intuitional side but sometimes the negative uh, some even the positive things you want to help somebody and there's this emotion a very strong one but when you have helped you see that something uh, didn't work the way you wanted because you didn't think a few steps ahead and um, Sometimes when you feel like uh, so, uh, there's some suffering inside you and you want to fix it, hoping that with one action you will uh, completely be able to, uh, to fix the situation, but it doesn't happen this way sometimes. Uh, let's, just, let's be very practical. For example, advertising. Uh, you know that, maybe you have heard that in order to sell something, you promote using uh, kids, children, everybody loves smiling kids on the advertising and commercials. You can use pets, uh, cats and dogs and other animals, uh, also very wonderful creatures because they don't fly uh, and kids don't fly. And then there is Third one that we see very often now uh, is the sex. Everything is sexy, and uh, and you the people use uh, this uh, this thing in order to sell something. Thereby, um, you understand in some moments that there was an advertising, you saw it, and you bought something. And even without analyzing, do you need it or not? Uh, yes, for for a day, two, maximum three days, you are very excited that you have bought something new. Um, but then uh, you again receive a new message from the commercials, go and buy. And again, you have the huge uh, packs of everything in your house. Uh, but somehow, there is not this feeling of happiness inside. Um, thereby, we should be careful in analyzing where do we spend our money and uh, maybe we should keep some money or spend it in a different way. As uh, uh, they, the ec economists have said, if you want uh, your voice to be heard, uh, then show it with your dollar. Probably those were American ones. And, and thereby uh, they use the dollar, but whatever currency you use, you just uh, use your money to show what you appreciate or not. If you say, yes, I love uh, biological farming, a wonderful thing uh, to eat eggs and, and fresh milk, uh, but then you go to the big supermarkets and you buy something contrary. And you support the big farms and big companies and the small ones uh, just have to leave the market and, or others uh, even worse to sell their uh, properties, uh, real estate and, and assets to the, to the richer ones. Uh, being rich is not bad, don't uh, misunderstand me. But still, if you think about every action, you analyze it from the perspective of the second principle, uh, you will see uh, what happens next. And thereby, uh, yes, just assess, do you really need to this thing that you are going to buy or somebody is willing you to buy it and then 
and they earn some extra money. Yes, thereby see carefully your emotions and analyze them along. Uh, one more practical example. Uh, there is a wonderful thing like charity. Uh, and a lot of kids need help. There are some charity organizations that are helping uh, the whole group of kids. Some charity organizations offer individual help for the kids. And their families really love these, uh, these small kids. And uh, at one moment, let's say, uh, one kid needs you know, um, 100,000 euros in order to get well. And the government is not paying that. And the people come together, what, what we say, 100,000 people giving you one euro and, and, the, and the child is feeling better, hopefully. At the same time, there could be thousands of kids uh, benefiting from this money and making this fam these families of these kids very, very happy just by a smaller amount of money. But it's, it's very difficult sometimes uh, if applying the second principle and the first one because you see how much suffering is behind it. Yes, there is one that's very special person for you and you will do anything as the family to help them or as their friends. And then there are hundreds and thousands of other kids that also need the help. And how can we help to the maximum people and uh, being nice to all of them? Uh, thereby, yoga is not saying that it's going to be easy. It, it, it can be uh, quite um, difficult and uh, hopefully and luckily we don't have to make such decisions every day. And if we can help, then, then we really try to do it. Um, I got this question on Brahmacharya principle. Uh, if you have been in yoga, uh, or have heard some materials before and heard about different schools of yoga, then the Brahmacharya principle, uh, for some false reason, is misinterpreted as abstaining from sexual relationships. And uh, some thereby have a stereotype that in order to be yogi, you need to be a monk. You need to forget everything about the, the sexual life and you need to forget about the opposite sex and you just go to the, some uh, monastery and, and live there and uh, devote yourself to the practice. However, before that, uh, the man or a woman has given uh, the other person, uh, the man or a woman, the promise to be the married to, to be married and to be there uh, for this person. And now the other person is suffering because you have given the word that uh, you will be there for this person and that includes also the relationship, physical, emotional. And yoga is very realistic, very logical. And uh, it also reviews these questions uh, as the as the as the one of the turn points of, of the every person. And also, we were talking about the goal, goals and the ways that returning of the holy death about the kids, because the, there is no yoga without life. You, you need to have kids and you need to have family, you need to have uh, a life around you to, to talk about yoga at all. And uh, actually the highest point from the aspect of yoga is your ability to live in the society. Of course, if, if in your family there were uh, six or seven kids and all of them have their own kids and families and and then, yes, sure, you can uh, devote your life for the sp spiritual uh, searches. 
But if not, then you have a debt, you have a duty to your ancestors to take good care for them to return uh, in this uh, world as the new uh, living beings and to, to really uh, take care of uh, people. Thereby, um, this is the different topic. Uh, this is from the top areas, advanced areas of yoga and uh, they require um, applying on the third yoga principle about uh, refusing from the suffering and helping other people to refuse from the suffering. So uh, we have to be, uh, we have this notion uh, that life and kids are very, very important. And Brahmacharya is, uh, is more about withholding or keeping your life energy, your strengths with you for the important reasons just uh, not wasting your resources and energy for uh, many, on many partners, but this is the completely different yoga and uh, requires at least some basic uh, understanding of the basic principles that, and of course for the first and the second principle of yoga. Thereby, um, we have to apply our energy in the right way and uh, not have this uh, huge amount of energy wasting it around and thereby understanding that we have spent our life without uh, a good reason. And yes, our life is complicated. Uh, applying of all the principles is not an easy task. And you are all the time on this uh, blade and you step one side, and you, step, you fall, you step to the other side, you fall. And then you have to find this, the middle, the golden path for, uh, for, the, for your uh, good things. And uh, actually, we have to understand that you will never get the result without the hard work. All the time. And somebody would say, well, somebody there won a million dollars or more. Uh, we don't know the entire prehistory. Maybe uh, three or four previous lives, this person was uh, working very hard and now the, finally the money has come. Uh, we really can't look inside in this person's life or heart to see how lucky this person is about those millions of dollars. Uh, because at one point, uh, all the people who have given you something will want to get their share. Some of them more, some of them less, but um, they will want to have their share. And then you have some unexpected friends from long ago willing to know how are you and meet with you and maybe borrow the money from you. So, yes, when the people win a large amount of money, they have to think over many and many things. Um, and it is very difficult then to apply the, uh, the first and the second principle. And really, most of them, uh, as the, some research shows, wish they had never received the money wish they had never uh, participated in any lottery and would have never really won the, this money because this brings more, uh, it's an accelerator, it makes things to happen faster. If you have the vision what to do with a million dollars, it's good, then go for it and play the, the games, the lottery. If you don't have any idea how would you spend a million, uh, then you should probably uh, restrain from that until you have the list of what you really want. And then some people say, okay, um, I don't care about the first principle. I want the money. I need the money. So the easiest way would be, uh, I'm not the kind of person, right? 
uh, steal, steal it, rob something, rob a bank. Who would suffer? It's a big bank. They do harm to a lot of people uh, in some people's perspective. And uh, I, that would cost them nothing if I were to lend some million or not. Uh, but of course, uh, it is not the right way. Uh, otherwise, you would have to pay your debt anyway. Earning the money, the hard work comes there, and you have to be ready that you have to work for it. And it's not an easy task. Thereby, you need uh, a good job. I mean, say, well, to, to buy what I need uh, that I could get in one day in a bag, um, I could. I would have to use uh, work 20 years. 20 years, low pay job. No, <laughs> you don't need to work a low pay job. It's not effective. It's uh, not following the second principle of yoga. Thereby, you should think about the job that is better paid. And you will see that this term for earning the money uh, is decreasing. She would say, okay, it's not a low pay job that I have, but I'm not really satisfied with the job. I don't like it. I don't want to wake up in the morning and it's boring. The boss is annoying. Uh, name any problem you want. Uh, it's there. Then what should you do? Uh, you should understand what you really want what you really want and what you really need. And also at the same time, you should understand what are the things that you absolutely don't want and absolutely don't like. Can you sit in an office where you want to be outside in the fresh air? Uh, do you want to work long hours where you want to know that you are working from nine to five and then you're forgetting about everything and going home. Uh, maybe you like to travel uh, for work and then when you come back you have some extra time uh, without a vacation. I know that I would not be able to work in an office for a long time. I experienced that it was a very good experience. Uh, probably I had to have this experience rather than imagining, wow, it's so wonderful to work in an office at the computer and everything. I like working at the computer, but uh, the work I had to do did not really expand my creative energy. And then I was feeling uh, low. So uh, I made a list what I expect from my new job. Uh, it required some extra education. Okay, uh, I can work and get some extra education at the same time. Uh, I start searching for the possibilities. Uh, wonderful if there are free vacancies or people already know about you. Uh, you have to let them know that you are searching for a new job because uh, Maybe they are really searching for the professional you are, uh, and they are really pay, ready to pay a good salary, but they don't know about you. So some CV, some resume, uh, some information about you, um, your research process. And then there are some works where you don't search for an employer, where you have to be employed for yourself. So you are self-employed. Uh, it doesn't always give you a, a fixed state uh, on, of the date of the salary that you will receive a check, but it expands your freedom in some way, of course, increasing some responsibility probably, but you are able to do uh, what you like. And this is also important to do what you like, so it means that you are the boss for yourself. You can say, I will do this, and you fulfill what you have promised to yourself, the first one, and to your clients or your partners too. 
So you should really assess uh, the positive and the negative things because the being without a job for some time is fun, but then it gets quite boring. Um, still, you will want to be engaged in some activities and uh, empty fun is empty. Thereby, it is at some day you find this feeling of emptiness inside and, and, and you really mm, are willing to get something more. But thereby, uh, also people are searching for some more information, some, some education uh, to, to, to make them feel better, to explore themselves and explore the world. Thereby, if you want to have a good job, go for it. And when you have, had, have found a good job, uh, you have to be ready to go for the next one, unless unless you have promised to your employer that you will work for this company or employer for certain time, because they might need to invest certain resources in you, and uh, you should be uh, trustworthy. Uh, if nobody can trust your word, then it's not, uh, not a good idea. However, uh, if your employer or partner has uh, not uh, given you the entire information about uh, the work, and this has been done consciously uh, for you to kind of catch you in a net like a fish, then... Uh, then it doesn't really uh, put any obligations on you. So uh, be flexible, be elastic, and don't be a fool. And uh, it's amazing how some wishes, uh, some things come to you with, without the million of dollars and euros and, and different other kinds of uh, currencies. Uh, there are, you have to be ready for... Uh, for challenges, for new challenges in your life, uh, and uh, and you will see how changes in you bring changes in the, uh, the external world, or something that happens externally will bring some some feelings in you. Thereby, we have to be very careful with the people who are around us. Some people are re really happy to work uh, for lower paid job but to work with exciting, interesting people who, uh, who love what they do. For some time you can work for money, for some time you can work on your debts, for some month at time you can uh, use your creative energy. It's the process of finding of your, yourself. Uh, and probably uh, the career you have chosen uh, after finishing the school will not be your career forever because we are changing and it's a very exciting and uh, exciting process. Uh, you just have to see it not as the failure but as a chance. Uh, seeing the bright side helps uh, and um, it's your motivation. You you would not you are not feel all the time searching for the the, the negative sides of, of certain situation, but you have to uh, look on the positive side. Still, of course, you have to see some uh, threats that might come. You you just act uh, uh, in a logical way. You don't really okay. I don't see no, I see nothing negative. I just see one one thing. It's the price. But of course, the uh, the way to your goal should agree with your goal rather than. Uh, washing everything away, then your goal will be washed away too, or there will be no enjoyment at all when you come to the goal. And when we have the complicated situations in your life, in our life, uh, yoga gives us the algorithm or the, the plan for making the decisions. Um, so, there is a situation, choose whatever you like, and you try to make possible, uh, possible, possible 
ways out of the situation. Or you have a goal you want to achieve and you go for it. Thereby, there are several ways to achieve the goal. And the first thing you have to remember is that you are free. You have the free will to do whatever you like. If uh, and you see all the, the possible variants uh, to do it, then you have to remember that you have your duty. It is, um, as we talked about Dharma, and it is ground uh, based on our karma, and uh, there is something that we have to do. If you are a parent and you, if your child is small and you are thinking about the spiritual growth and leading to some ashram, uh, then you probably won't leave for long. Or uh, there is a wonderful uh, possibility to, to grow up, to develop together with your family, with the kids. They are not the obstacles. They are not the barriers for you to grow. They are fantastic. They are experiencing you in every possible way. Can you really hold the, the level of patience, understanding, uh, applying with the first principle when you have small kids? And as, as we have talked, it is much more difficult than just going on your own with your ego, uh, pretending to be a very nice one person, but actually... Um, if you have a duty, then you have a duty you have to fulfill. And you compare these uh, variants of possible answers with the, your duty. Then we remember the first principle and review all the variants uh, with that. If somebody is not, uh, does not agree with the fact, we put it aside. Then we have the second principle, uh, the pr principle of efficiency. So we try to find the very effective way. Like with the job, we take the one that suits us the most, closest to the home, uh, best condition, working conditions, salary, um, bonuses, uh, people you are working to. You just name it, what's important for you. Maybe you like to work alone. Maybe you uh, really need a strict boss who is following how you have fulfilled otherwise because uh, you are going in all possible directions without getting anywhere. And uh, this is your efficiency. If this goal has to do something with the mutual relationships and top advanced areas of yoga, you apply the third principle of yoga. And this is the principle for refusing from suffering. It's a really powerful method. Uh, but yes, we will talk about that uh, much, much later. Then, uh, again, probably we'll bring something aside. Then, uh, if there are still options, you have to consult with authorities, with people whom you respect whose uh, opinion you value as, a, as highly authoritative. Uh, or there is also a possibility to talk, talk with your people who are like-minded and whom you like uh, in the way how they make decisions. Or there is also the opinion of majority. Imagine you want something and all the family or all the people are just against it. For them, one of the options, and you would, you have to think if it's your option or not. And then, as the very final point, you remember that you are free. You started with the notion of freedom, and you end with it. It means if it even didn't agree with the principles, no, not kindness, not efficiency, not non-suffering, and nobody else agreed. But you are free. You are up to choose. It's your life. It's your decision. And uh, this will bring some uh, 
cause some effect and will bring some consequences. You just have to be ready for that. But your decision is your decision. Nobody else can take it from you. And yogis really appreciate uh, and value the freedom. Otherwise, you would say, oh, there are so uh, great yogis uh, around the world. They should put us, show us completely the right way so we would not make a mistake and there would be no suffering. However, it means it's uh, taking away of our free will. Uh, you would say, okay, there is this evil force uh, causing all the military conflicts or or some uh, world leader um, is just not getting the way it should be. Well, we all have the opinion in politics. Um, then why couldn't come the yogi and bring this person off the throne? This is the matter of the free will. The yogis, the gurus, they really uh, give this high value to the freedom of the free will and you are free to make your own mistakes, you are free to go your own way as you have decided and nobody else uh, can do it for you. Thereby we have to be careful with that. And there's also the, even on the level of the company, you would say the good boss and the bad boss. What's the difference? Uh, is the strict boss uh, a good one or not? Um, it depends on the people who are working. There are some creative people who really need their own time to have their work done. They can wake up late, they can go sleep early, they can show up for work hour late, uh, they might not be very logical or they can dress differently, uh, you name it. But when it comes to the work, they are in their own universe and working on this uh, project. Thereby, uh, when the time comes, they have this wonderful project ready. And then there are people who really need somebody to kind of pushing them, please do this. Now it's turned to this. And there is the very detailed plan uh, about each move and the deadline. Move and deadline. You haven't completed, that's your problem. This is more realistic for those works that a regular, similar, uh, or just already known uh, how they will go step by step. And then they need the street boss, otherwise the work is not going to be done. And nobody will uh, really uh, say that the, the boss who is being strict is a bad boss. It just uh, depends on the people you are working to. Still, um, yes, and, and of course, uh, if the boss is not going to uh, take care of the flow of works and employees, then uh, the company will probably go bankrupt and there will be no, no use in it. Of course, if there are employers exploiting, if you feel that somebody exploiting you, uh, with malicious uh, willingness, you are always free to go, right? Regardless what they are promising you, you are free to go. If there are some complicated situations, uh, make your decision and, and do what you have to do. Uh, because uh, exploiting and not giving anything in return, just a very harsh experience, uh, is that a very nice way to do? And you, it's your duty to leave this kind of work if you think so. Uh, it's, it's showing just the, this person that uh, this is not the way how the things happen. But there are countries where um, there are different uh, working conditions. And for some people, we can help with the some activities, but there are some people who really need to make this decision themselves. Otherwise, they will say, 
why did you interfere? I didn't need you or to, to do it. Um, this is especially uh, when, when we try to help when we are not asked. And uh, usually in these kind of situations, you will never be thanked for that. But if something will go wrong, believe me, you will be the one to charge for it. Uh, have been in this situation uh, several times, not a pleasant one, because uh, sometimes it really seems that uh, you know better. You really know better how to do it. Uh, but you have to give the, this person the possibility to experience it, like with the kid. The kids are very smart. And they are much smarter than we can even imagine. And there is the time when the baby needs to get on the foot and start walking. Walking, It happens around the, a year of age. And then parents are like trying to put always the pillow under the kid just to not fall down. So how the child will know how does it feel to fall down? It just... Otherwise, yes, the kid can be stable on, on the foot. Sometimes when they go to school, you really try to check everything. Do they have all the homeworks? Do they uh, mm, have taken all the things with them? Uh, did they put this? Did they uh, do that? And they didn't, they are not ready to take this responsibility on themselves because they have this in their mind. Oh, my mommy or daddy will take care of that. I don't need to take care of it. But as soon as they forget something at home and feel the consequences, they become more uh, conscious about what they are doing. And actually, this is the way we help them. Yes, uh, for a small moment of time, this child will be disappointed that the mom hasn't put the, the math book inside the bag, school bag. But it's not her duty, right? And uh, we have to take, as the parents, we have to take care for the kids to be independent, self-confident, and to be able to help themselves rather than us taking care of them all the time. Uh, it is painful, it's difficult to see your child making a mistake uh, you want to bring the, the, the kid in a trolley or carriage uh, for a very long time and, and you are surprised that in age of three or four the child is still not working a lot. It means that at some point the child will be disappointed, uh, crying, uh, putting hands up, please, oppa, like bring, take me on your hands or uh, carry me. Uh, you see where this child really needs that, but where you can push this limit further, where you can expand the freedom of child. Actually, it's about the freedom. It's about the expanding of the child's freedom. And uh, the bigger it will be if the child is ready, the better. And every time we, uh, as was our duty, we have to see if we are not exceeding the limits. Uh, Still, with the example of the parents and the child, you have to take a close look if the child is ready for the next one. Um, even if you don't have experience and if it's the first child, you try to you have this inner feeling, the intuition, or however you call it, and you go in this uh, direction. You make a step, you analyze. And then you can go on and, and on. Uh, the boss, if you know your employees well, you know what kind of people are suitable for the job and you find them, you have to know their positive and negative sides. What are their habits? And uh, can you leave them without attending? Or you really need to look, have a close eye on them. Sometimes a close eye is irritating and the People feel it as an extreme pressure, especially the creative ones. Uh, they uh, feel that they are not trusted and that's not uh, letting them to feel 
um, good and um, they will probably want to leave this position or this company but they are then there are people whom you will not look after they will never do what they have to do and this is the the place we can discuss is it good or bad it's either appropriate or inappropriate in some situations you have to do it um, it's your duty to go and fix it even if you don't like it even if it brings bad emotions you would want to be like a sunshine everywhere like you would come and everything would get sold it happens yoga helps to do that but sometimes there is your negative karma or your duty that you have to fulfill and you have to to put somebody in a place where this person has to be where sometimes you just need to uh, make the space for somebody else to come and you have to move on yes that's like that mm. And yes, we know a lot of people who will find thousands of reasons to not to do what they should do, uh, like coffee breaks, uh, some other uh, ideas of how to change the project. Uh, it, some people think that they should interfere where they shouldn't. So, uh, online communication, social networks, uh, wonderful things um, there are, but they are not uh, in the right place. So, yes, we, we have the first principle, the principle of kindness, we follow it, we have the second principle, the efficiency principle, and we follow it. Also, when I mentioned the yoga teachers, uh, when they uh, look at the situation. They have many uh, powerful tools to impact the situation, but they always remember of the first principle of yoga. And they see the broader picture. Probably there is the one person who is exceeding the duty, but there are many other people who are letting this happen. And while they are covering uh, some things just to keep in their position, it's their inner fear uh, that they might lose the position and some employers uh, choose not the most effective employee but the most loyal one uh, because uh, they feel safer this way because they might know that there are some uh, better or uh, more educated, more successful people who could take their position and instead of learning or advancing or changing the position, uh, they are just trying to make kind of big great wall around them uh, to protect their own uh, world. It's very um, fragile, but for some time they think it's helping and that's what they are doing. And. Uh, at the same time, we are not really able to help people who don't want to receive help. Uh, they are free. They have their freedom. And if you are not asked for the help, or if even in the words you are see, seeing this asking for help, but you see that hmm, this person is doing quite a, the opposite. Life was the charity. Um, there are different programs, social programs, helping uh, different people uh, to be good, to advance, or to learn, or even with the small things like food. First time, they are very happy uh, for the help. The second time, they are happy. The third time, it's okay, normal, that's, that's the way it should be. And for the first time, uh, number four, when you expect themselves to do something, they say, well, where is my food? Where is my help? Where is my aid? Where is my support? 
and you are like, wow. Thereby, yoga says you give the knowledge rather than you give some, you give the tools to do the work. You don't do the work for them. Um, because otherwise, this will be your own karma and it will be negative one. Uh, that instead of helping them or letting them to develop, you, they can lay down and be very happy while you are working hard for them. And yes, if you give the knowledge, wonderful. Uh, they have to take it. Uh, to use it if they don't want to take it. It's their own right and the possibility not to do it. And luckily there is Dharma for any situation of karma. There's always this path uh, where you will enjoy the maximum of your good things and the minimum of the bad things you have caused and uh, receive the maximum benefits. We always get the results of our actions. Whatever is the action, while we are in the plane of logic, we get the results, we see how it goes, and uh, we have to make the results. Rather than running from the one point, we feel very safe, somewhere in the center, run to the one side. Oh, we made some several goals around, and we even don't make a halfway, we run back because we don't be oh it was secured at that point. I don't I, I like that, yes. Keep me there. Uh, I will imitate that I'm moving, but you know, the the waste of time and waste of energy is there and and you would say, Well I did the move, but there was no result. Come on, why there is no result? Um and also, well they in the past did this way. Uh, now they are doing a different way. Yes, in the very ancient times, the yoga teachers were sitting at their place and waiting when, or, or going around uh, and waiting when their students will come. They would never promote themselves. They would never advertise. Uh, but in some way, people would see that these people would give a lectures just by the fact that you have given them some donations, some food, and they would share their knowledge. And in two or three days, they would leave from this place and go to the next place. And then there were the followers who were going uh, along with these yogis, uh, ready to help them and to be their students and ensuring their practical sides of, uh, of their life. But they would... Uh, never uh, put an advertisement, I'm the great yoga teacher. It was not decent for them. Uh, and they would not put their name on their box because they would find that this is coming, the information is not coming from them, uh, but it's coming somewhere from the supreme levels. And they are just like the translators, like a radio, like the channel through which the information is given, but it's not their information. That's why, why should they put their word there? But today, uh, the life has changed. People are gathering uh, more in the cities. So we need some yoga teachers, practitioners there, who would prepare them for those uh, yoga teachers who live outside the city, or there are some uh, specific uh, places of power where you will find the strongest yoga teachers, or there are teachers who are still walking around, and there are groups of people gathering around them. But unless you have this basic uh, knowledge of the yoga material, of yoga theory, you will not be able to understand them, because there is the direct level when we are talking, and there are some layers underneath. And only kind people really get the access to yoga to yoga knowledge, uh, and even though you would say, okay, I'm the richest person in the world, bring me the knowledge. And all your assistance, your um, support service, client service, uh, would go to any place of the world and bring all the information together. And, 
and you would get tons of the materials, you would get something in a material form, but this knowledge is not material, and you need to reach some, some, some level of consciousness to be able to understand them. Thereby we say that, uh, or yoga says that, uh, yoga is available to wise people, to kind and wise people. And when you are kind, uh, it's, it's very easy to become uh, intelligent, even if you have lived a very simple life. While the fact that you're intelligent does not mean that you are kind. We have a lot of uh, uh, modern people who are very, as they say, used to the conditions of the modern life. But yes, they earn more, they, use, uh, they have a better car, better home, nicer. But somewhere inside, they know that uh, they are still lacking of something. Thereby, uh, yes. With, when you are kind, it's easy to sharpen your mind. And it means that you have had some prehistory of yoga knowledge. You have been admitted, even that your interest to be uh, listening to this material means that you have some preconditions uh, in the past to have access to this material. And it's uh, the more there will be uh, of such people, the more they will be connected, uh, related, the, the, the higher will be the consciousness. Uh, of course, it's good if they are somewhere and they know something, but uh, when they come together, their, uh, their strength is far, far bigger, far more powerful when that's the one that we would take as the sum of, of them by when they are apart. And yoga gives the power. Power in yoga uh, is achieved only by following the first and the second principle. You are kind and you are effective. You work in the plane of karma, in the plane of logic. You try to, to express your kindness by experiencing it, even if the, it does not really seem very logical. Because somebody did something bad, uh, and you feel that you are like, ooh, ooh, ooh this negativity. Uh, actually, when, when you practice yoga, uh, and this power is coming and you still are not very strong in the first principle, it is very easy to, to do harm. Because when there is a small, ordinary person not practicing yoga, the harm, there will be harm, but it would not be substantial. When you practice yoga, you have this energy, you have this power, you, you are strong and you are not, but you are weak in the first principle, then uh, you will have to go through the result that you will experience. And this again is this closed circle. You practice, you apply first two principles, uh, you grow, you get more powerful. Again, you practice, you follow the first two principles, and you grow. Thereby, this is the ancient wisdom, and and you get to uh, even more access to to, to 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 deeper yoga knowledge. You receive the knowledge, uh, you kind of process it through yourself. That's why it's not just possible to to read the materials and if I you say I know uh, if. We can't really put through ourselves. We don't experience it. We have no experience. We just, uh, we have some notion that it might work or there is some information, but we have not put through ourselves. And if we are not kind and strong in the first principle, again, it's not working. Thereby, it's a good test that I suggested you in the very beginning to check uh, to take uh, a certain amount of time, let's say months or two or better a year, um, write down on the sheet of paper the first principle, the second principle, and 
there is this um, something that you promise to yourself. Uh, I will. I want it. I know how to do it. And I will do it. Three things. Write down. <laughs> Write down in your, uh, your yoga manual. I want something. What do you want? I want to practice yoga every day. I know how to practice yoga every day and I will practice yoga every day. And then make this, uh, at first, every day, at least 15 minutes, I will spend on my mat. I can be laying down on my mat, but still, I do it. And I practice yoga. I apply the first two principles. I apply the method of consciousness and energy of the balance. And I... Every week, I watch yoga lessons, online yoga lessons, and I, I advance in this area. If it helps me, good. If you want to lose weight, um, you review you, what you eat, how much you move. Uh, you start um, following when you eat more, uh, and you start reviewing the different suggestions on the how to improve your uh, weight but do it healthy and then you do something and you see it works for you or not can you eat only vegetables can you do it what effect does it give you can you eat only one whatever it is one thing help does it help or not but whatever you do uh, do it slowly uh, there is no need to start starving uh, right away if you are used to the five meals a day and in between you have some snacks or some candies or your coffee breaks and then one day you say, oh no, this is, this is it, uh, this is my New Year's uh, promise, I stop eating. I will be starving for 40 days because uh, I decided so. Um, this will be causing a lot of suffering to your body, to yourself, rather than do it slowly and step by step. The same as yoga. You don't go for a uh, 10-hour practice a day. You can do a retreat from time to time when you are uh, feeling stable on your regularity of the yoga practice, but uh, not right away. And... Uh, really slowly, peacefully, uh, or you say, oh, I leave everything, now there is only yoga. Yoga is the life, yoga is the practice. It's living in a family, or in a community, being helpful, being kind, being effective. If you have a present, a gift inside you that could help many people, why should you uh, decide that you are not going to do it and you will leave it for some, some unknown reason, or you would have heard, oh yes, yoga is helping, uh, I know that there is somebody uh, who helped somebody else, or somebody else's friend, who said that this person will help you, nobody can say if this person can help you, you can learn from them a lot, probably, but we all are different, we all are free, we all are special, so we have to find our own teachers. And sometimes our enemies are the best teachers, and they are giving us a very good lesson. Uh, yes, so we all have some habits, and some of the habits are very logical. Like, uh, there is a bus that we use for going home if we live in a city. And there is the bakery, the fantastic bakery, making fantastic uh, breads, warm. Mm. And when you pass them, you feel the smell. It's just impossible to not to go in, to chat with the, the salesman and, and buy fantastic things and even more than you would need and eat them. You can change the way. You can change the way uh, you go home, you can change the way you eat, you can 
change the way you perceive the life and it is very positive uh, for you. Actually, the, I'm talking about the buying and, and the Christmas time is approaching. 20 days, counting, crossing out. Uh, and when you go to the supermarket already, you see there are shelves full of the presents and ideas and all of them are saying bye, 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 bye. Do you really need that? Do you remember? Now, if you are uh, have seen or read the Harry Potter's book, he had a cousin, Deadly, and it was his birthday or Christmas, I don't remember, but every year he needed one more present than the previous year. So there were like tons of the presents. And what I have seen during the recent years is also that people are buying presents, presents and presents, especially for the kids. And there are more and more and more because we can afford them. And and the child is taking one present. Oh, it's fantastic. There is some, or a book, or a toy, or, and then, oh, there is the next one. And the, the, the child already has forgotten about the first present. And when they come to the 20th present, who will ever remember those at least uh, 19 before, that were before? Nobody. Thereby, uh, we should think on this uh, kindness and logical principle. Does our child need so many presents? Okay, uh, 20 presents, 20 small things. Uh, it's just the, per the this little child is not able to concentrate on so many things at the same time. Uh, imagine that you would get 20 presents. I think you would be confused. Me too, 20 presents at the same time. I would rather uh, be happy for receiving one present per week or less or once a month. But this, this would be a special thing. And child, when uh, there is a one very special present, doesn't have to be a big one, <laughs> something that the child really needs for the development, for their heart, uh, and spend the time with the child, playing with them, uh, developing the, their fantasy, rather than feeling guilty that you don't spend enough time. Spend the time now. The, thing is not making the child happy uh, uh, because uh, there is this information flow by 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 the children needs the children need toys uh, the more toys the better the bigger the better the more expensive the better who said that do you know where this information is coming from analyze it use your logic and be a nice nice Santas for your kids uh, this Christmas and maybe they really need the time together with you. Maybe you really should uh, listen uh, in, in them what they need rather than what you think they need. Uh, do you think it's the, the tablet or uh, the huge car on the batteries or uh, a large doll? Uh, or whatever is the, the, the brand things now, I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, the ch children are fantastic and you can learn uh, their, in their ability to be happy. And rather than spending the time at the TV or whatever screen it is, be together. Uh, it's, it will give a more secure and more stable foundation for them uh, for the next year. And I really, really suggest you to, to spend more time with them and not getting in this crazy world of, of buying presents and uh, really uh, be more, more home rather than spending more time at work and uh, trying to earn. Because uh, I know some dads that would spend uh, and moms at work uh, was this feeling that I am working for them. I am there to help my kids to, to have everything, to have the bills paid, to buy good food, uh, for them to go to school, 
to, to go to the good school, to have a good university. Um, and then at one point, you know, uh, you don't know your kids anymore because they live their own life and you haven't had time. Sometimes we are trying to escape from home because being with kids is the challenge. We know how much it takes. Um, if you have the kids, if not, then um, then think about your small brothers and sisters and small kids around you. They are fantastic and they need your communication. I have spent a great time with the kids. Uh, sometimes I go there with a the notion, oh, I know what they need. And then I'm like, ooh, they don't want to communicate in the way I want it. But I, they want it to communicate in their way. So uh, should we listen to them or expect that they are the small adults? And then at the end of our class, let me tell you an ancient parable about the Buddha. Buddha was meditating at one place and he met the man practicing yoga. And they spent some time together um, and then Buddha left. He left and 20 years later, Buddha came back to the place um, used to be and he asked the man, well, you are practicing yoga for 20 years. What have you learned? What have you achieved? And the yogi answered, well, I have meditated and I have practiced yoga and now I can walk on the, over the water. And uh, Buddha told him, so you spent, you wasted 20 years uh, to learn walking on the water, but the boatman could take you over the river almost for free. And this is the logic, right? Do you really need the super ability to walk on the water if there are boats? And it's much more easier. Whatever you can do on a logic level, try to do it on the logic level rather than spending your <clears throat> time for super abilities that uh, some people are demonstrating or pretend them to be demonstrating. Yoga is the, the short way. Um, it saves your time, it makes you more powerful. If you have the possibility to decrease the suffering around you, please do so. And don't follow the pattern that uh, somebody is telling you that it's the, that everybody is doing it or the majority is doing it. Analyze it. Be careful, analyze it. And uh, be strong in the first principle of yoga. And if there is somebody hurting your feelings, um, at least here inside you, quietly, not to surprise them, um, wish them the happiness. Really wish them the happiness. And uh, I wish happiness to you. And I hope you are progressing in your yoga studies. We'll meet next week, but it's going to be a different time. So please follow our website. And I remind you that this www.yogaopenyoga.com. Uh, there you will find this lecture and the other lessons that we have had before. You will find the text materials and many other things. And I just remind you that my name is Eugenie Rasa and I'm the yoga instructor of the International Yoga Universities, uh, University and we are meeting soon again. Thank you for listening and watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.